It's time for a paradigm shift in this episode of Battle Guides, featuring Zamasal, now with less linear corridors. Zamasal is an adaptive brawler who can use his varied effects to toolbox a solution for almost any problem. However, that all comes at the cost of having conditional stats, needing to manage his paradigms very well, as well as being easily card locked. Zamasal's unique ability is Subjective Reality. Zamasal has 5 Paradigm cards and starts with none of them active. He may have at most one of them active, and he applies the effects of the current Paradigm to his attack pair as if it were a second style. Now note that whenever Zamasal would be stunned or assumes a new Paradigm, he loses all current active Paradigms. Now in order to talk about this unique ability, we have to go through the Paradigms. First up is Paradigm of Fluidity. Paradigm of Fluidity is pretty good because it technically gives you range plus 0 to 1 on all of your attack pairs, but more than that, end of beat, you can still move up to one space. This Paradigm is quite powerful because of the fact that you can reposition yourself in order to make your opponent miss or have them have a hard time hitting you next beat. It's quite powerful and it gives you hit confirm. What more can you want from a Paradigm? Well, maybe you'd want the Paradigm of Haste. This thing doesn't necessarily give you a lot of stats, in fact, I don't think it gives you any at all, but it does give you two awesome passive effects. Passively, you win priority ties without clashing, and also opponents adjacent to you may not move. This is a very powerful paradigm because of multiple reasons. It technically gives you priority plus 0.5, because if you and the opponent end up clashing, you just win that priority tie without clashing, which is very, very good, especially if your opponent's trying to counter you. Again, Zamasal is a character that doesn't have necessarily big stats all the time, so it's really easy to clash him out of his best attack pairs. This prevents that. But the bigger thing here is that your opponent can't move if he's adjacent to you. And what does that basically mean? Dash and Burst become useless. Those bases are really only effective if they get to move. With this in play, your opponent can't use those and it effectively shuts down the amount of options they have. It's quite powerful for that reason alone. Next up is the Paradigm of Pain. The Paradigm of Pain basically says on damage, the opponent loses 2 life. Uh, effectively, this is just extra 2 damage for whatever attack you do onto your opponent. It effectively means that you have power plus 2, that doesn't contribute to you stunning the opponent, if that makes any sense. All in all, it just basically means that Zamasal can trade really, really well. And this is very powerful if you want to get trades in. Again, uh, Zamasal is a very powerful stat character depending on what paradigms he has. And this paradigm turns him into a trading monster. Paradigm of Resilience is quite powerful because it gives you Soak 2 at start of the beat. And then after activating, you lose all Soak even the ones not from Paradigm of Resilience. This Paradigm is quite powerful for two reasons. Number one, because it gives you effective stun guard. As a character who hates being stunned, you want to basically have as much stun guard as possible, and Paradigm of Resilience gives you that. On the other hand, it has a cute little trick up its sleeve as well, which I think is quite powerful. I have not talked about the styles yet, but a lot of styles in Zamasal's kit have an after activating effect that allows you to assume a different paradigm. This can be quite potent because if you have that styles after activating effect and then paradigm of resiliences after activating effect, you can activate the styles assume a new paradigm effect first and then it allows you to swap out paradigm of resilience which means you don't have to resolve the after activating effect anymore. This effectively allows you to keep your soak despite being faster. And this is quite powerful, especially because even if you are faster, you can still be stunned. And finally, we have the Paradigm of Distortion. This Paradigm is quite powerful because it gives Zamasal zoning powers. Uh, usually, ranged combat is at range 4, which makes this Paradigm amazing for avoiding enemy ranged attacks. On the other hand, if the opponent plans to retreat or push you or whatever, range 3 will always be included in your attacks. This means as long as you have range plus 1 to 2 on your regular attack, you have an effective range 1 to 3 attack, which is quite powerful considering that you get this for 
free. And with the other passive effect in tow, you basically control the middle... Mid-range? Is that what we call it? Mid-screen. You effectively control mid-screen so well because you can simply skirt around range 3 and range 4 in order to avoid your opponent. Now, this unique ability is quite interesting and quite powerful. Basically, a lot of his paradigms are not amazing. They're not like as good as like Hikaru getting power plus 3 and then soak 3 from his elemental tokens. But the thing is, these things are not only passive, but you can effectively just keep repeatedly getting them every single freaking turn. Uh, that basically means that their strength doesn't come from their, like, effects. It's not that these effects are quite powerful. It's just that you can toolbox your kit in such a way that you can force the opponent into terrible situations. If they're adjacent to you and you switch into the paradigm of haste, suddenly they can't play their bursts and their dashes. And it's quite a horrible thing for them. Basically, Zamasal's biggest strength is the biggest strength of a lot of brawlers out there. He can adapt to almost any situation, as well as capitalize on opponent weaknesses. Keep these two things in mind, and you'll use this unique ability very well. Note, however, that there are two things I have to go over with you guys. Number one is the fact that even if you are faster, you can still be stunned. This is very important for Zamasal, because people tend to forget that you can still be stunned even if you are active player. Keep that in mind because if you get stunned, like say you play a fast grasp and your opponent has a shot and then you get whacked and then you get stunned, you still lose your paradigm, which can be grueling and horrible if you have the correct setup if that did not happen. It's such a waste of time and resources that it makes my heart break. The other thing we have to talk about is management. The thing about Zamasal's paradigms is that he has no way of actually changing paradigms the turn he's in. What I basically mean is that when you gain a new paradigm, you actually reap almost none of the benefits until the next beat. This means that Zamasal is more of a setup character. And it's not about reacting to the current situation. like. You don't see the current situation and go like, Oh yeah, I'll switch to Paradigm this immediately right now and benefit from it right now. Rarely is that actually the case. Oftentimes, you basically have to do a Paradigm now that you will benefit from next beat. So remember that. Think two steps ahead and you will be able to utilize this unique ability quite well. Now let's go to Zamasal Styles. Now, here's the thing about Zamasal's styles. You know how I got, I give you guys magic numbers, and you know how I love range plus 0 to 2, and stun guard 3, and so on and so forth. And you know how I'm like, oh, brawlers can basically do a little bit of everything, right? That's, enti that's Zamasal's entire kit. I literally kid you not, every single one of his styles basically reads, create a magic number attack. And it's pretty freaking absurd because it turns almost every attack into a viable attack when you're using Zamasal. So if you think about it that way, this guy technically never has bad attacks. However, one thing to realize about Zamasal is that even if his attacks are generally okay, they're not that powerful. Like, they fill the minimum requirement, but that's it. They don't go over and beyond the Call of Duty. But aside from this, he's still easily card-locked despite having very versatile styles because of the fact that his styles are the ones that allow you to assume certain paradigms. So if a certain paradigm is the paradigm you want, but that paradigm style is in this card, you've effectively card-locked yourself out of a paradigm. So it's very hard to think uh, multiple steps ahead in order to get the right paradigm and the right style at the right time, but then that's why he's an advanced character. Now remember one thing about all of Zamasal's styles. All of them allow you to effectively change into the paradigm that they're associated with, but remember that this is only optional. So if you currently have a paradigm that you really, really like, playing another style will not force you out of that paradigm, so keep that in mind. Urgent basically allows you to close the gap in order to make the Paradigm of Haste that much more powerful. However, on its own, it's an amazing style. It effectively has range plus 0 to 2, and it has priority plus 2. Wow, that's absurd. That's really, really, and I mean really good. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this with 
Strike. Strike and this are best friends because, you guessed it, it gives it the hit confirm it so desperately needs. But aside from that, it makes it a generally fast attack. Priority 5, and you can basically counter uh, a lot of your opponents generally faster plays and if they don't see it coming they eat three damage to the face the best thing about this though is that you still have stun guard five afterwards which is quite good considering the fact that you can effectively uh prevent yourself from losing the paradigm of haste which is arguably one of zamasal's strongest paradigms aside from this you may opt for a urgent paradigm shift paradigm shift is zamasal's unique base and basically allows him to assume any paradigm he wants on the other hand, Urgent is the fastest style he has. See where I'm going here? If you need a specific paradigm, this attack pair is the one for you. It basically effectively gives you a range 2 to 5 attack, which is quite good, at 5 priority with the ability to turn it into any paradigm you want that's quite versatile. And I call this the Toolbox attack pair because it effectively easily allows you to get the paradigm you need and want. Now, if Urgent was the fast style, Sinuous is the movement style. Uh, this thing has decent stats with a plus one priority to boot. And then, after activating, you can assume the Paradigm of Fluidity. Remember, the Paradigm of Fluidity gives you a lot of repositioning capabilities, which, then again, fits a lot with what Sinuous does. But the thing here is that end of beat on Sinuous, you can basically move directly onto any space on the board. With Sinuous's end of beat effect, you can effectively reposition yourself for a great turn next turn. And remember, since Zamasal is all about the setup, you can effectively set it up so that you have a great beat. Say that you currently have the Paradigm of Distortion, you can effectively use this to teleport to range 4 in order to threaten your opponent with the instant dodge. Or, if you have the Paradigm of Haste, you can effectively teleport next to them and then just ruin their day. Whatever the case is, this Attack makes for great setup. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Dash. Dash effectively lets you get a free teleport onto anywhere on the board and it's safe. Simple as that, and it lets you get the paradigm of fluidity if you really, really desperately wanted it. Now, the thing about this is that it doesn't necessarily have a great attack pair afterwards, but if you really, really desperately are in need for another attack pair aside from Dash, you can effectively pair this with Drive in order to take advantage of that priority plus one and still have some decent hit confirm. So we've gone over the fast style, the movement style, now we have the range style. Next up is Warp. It has range plus zero to two and then nothing else. Start a beat, it allows Zamasal to retreat one space and then after activating you may assume the paradigm of distortion. Uh, this is a quite powerful attack simply because it gives you so much hit confirm and allows you to dodge as well. Uh, it's as simple as that. And then the retreat synergizes very well with the Paradigm of Distortion because of the fact that the Paradigm of Distortion allows you to hit opponents that are at range 3 and dodge opponents that are at range 4, which is quite good. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with your Quintessential Burst. The retreat effects and the range plus speak for themselves. It allows you to dodge almost any attack and then hit them back for quite decent damage. However, this also synergizes very well with your grasp. If you grasp them, then push them away from you, you effectively end up at range 3, which is essentially what you wanted in the first place because uh, it allows you to threaten hitting them with the auto hit. It's as simple as that. So now we've done the range style, now we have the power style. Malicious gives you plus power minus priority stun guard 2. After activating, you can then assume the Paradigm of Pain! This is quite a powerful style simply because it deals a lot of damage and lets you assume the Paradigm that lets you deal even more damage. Uh, the thing about this though is that the Stun Guard 2 is quite powerful but it makes you slow. But that's usually fine. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I of course highly recommend pairing this attack with Shot. Shot it benefits a lot from the Stun Guard 2 and it benefits a lot from the range from shot. It's simple as that. Malicious also pairs very well with strike. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense to tell you guys to do a malicious strike because it doesn't have enough hit confirm, but remember that you have Paradigm of Haste. If you get adjacent to the opponent and have Paradigm of Haste, playing a malicious strike is a nearly undodgeable attack that deals 5 damage. Simple, powerful, but effective. 
Now we've done the power style. Finally, we have the defensive style that gives you stun guard. We have sturdy. It has no stats, but it gives you stun immunity, which on its own I think is freaking amazing. However, not only that, but you can ignore movement effects applied to you, including your own. So if your movement effect would mess up your positioning or whatever, you can use this to prevent that from happening. And of course, after activating, you may assume the paradigm of resilience. This style is just so good. I mean, just look at it. Stun immunity for no cost. What? That's really freaking absurd. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with shot. Again, synergizes a well with shots. High range and, you know, it has stun immunity. They, those two go together most of the time. But it also synergizes very well with strike. Again, Marco, why are you telling us to do a strike that has no range? Because this thing is very similar to malicious strike. Simply put, if you have the paradigm of haste active, you can get in there and hit them with a sturdy strike. This time, it's even more undodgeable because malicious strike can be countered by grasp. Sturdy Strike is just so powerful that not even Grasp can counter it. So basically, it effectively turns into a trade with your opponent turn. Which Zamasal is completely fine with most of the time. And finally, we have Zamasal's unique base. Paradigm Shift! Not only is this a really awesome sounding unique base, it has decent stats. Range 2 to 3, which is pretty good. Uh, power 3, Prio 3, and after activating, you may assume any paradigm of your choice. This is quite a powerful base simply because it gives you the ability to toolbox out any one of your styles. I, any one of your paradigms. So this is quite powerful if you really, 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 really need a paradigm and the style is in the discard. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Urgent. As I've said, it's quite powerful and quite fast. But if you really desperately want a paradigm to stick, pair it with Sturdy so that you not only have the paradigm you want, but you assure yourself that you will not get stunned out of it because you're stun immune. Some of the overdrive finishes are Open the Gate and Plane Divider. Open the Gate is a generally fast mid-range upgrade overdrive finisher. Uh, it doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it's absurdly fast and has range 1 to 2, so it's not that bad. But the thing about it is that on hit, the opponent is not only stunned, but Zamasal then gets to assume 3 paradigms of his choice, surpassing the regular limit of 1. This is freaking absurd because you can basically have any 3 paradigms of your choice active for the rest of the game, so long as you don't get stunned. But if you have 3 paradigms active, I do think you just win the game, because paradigms are that powerful. Just imagine trying to face someone who has Paradigm of Fluidity, Paradigm of Resilience, and Paradigm of Haste active all at the same time. It's absurd and nearly impossible to deal with. Trust me, I've experienced it before. Now, uh, the thing about this though is that if you assume a new Paradigm or are stunned, you lose all currently active Paradigms, so you lose all three. So make sure you just don't get stunned and you'll do well with this Overdrive Finisher, which will usually win you the rest of the game. Now, if that's not your thing, Plane Divider might be more of your thing. It has its melee range, it has low power, it has generally low priority, but it has a before activating teleport to anywhere, so effectively it makes up for your poor range. But the on hit is the best part. You can basically move the opponent anywhere onto the board, and then the spaces between you is power plus one for each space. This is basically the powerful attack that you do if your opponent is cornered, but still has a space behind them, this will result in the most amount of damage, which is 7. It's not that good of an overdrive finisher, but if you desperately need the extra hit confirm, this might be the overdrive that you need. As with a lot of characters who have antis or whatsoever, Samasal's paradigms apply to these things as well. So if you need the extra hit confirm, extra defense, extra movement or whatever, you can effectively get those from your paradigms, just make sure to set them up. Now, if the overdrive finishers aren't your thing, you might want to do a cancel or a pulse. A cancel is quite powerful on Zamasal because he's a brawler and brawlers love messing with your options. It's as simple as that. Aside from that, Zamasal is a guy who basically likes toolboxing you to mess you up with his setup. So, the less options he you have, uh, the less things Zamasal has to worry about. So, they really love their cancels. 
Pulse is quite interesting as well for one reason. Zamasol is actually a weird setup character, and a lot of his setup comes in the form of making himself adjacent to you or making you range 4 from him. Pulse can basically do both of those things, and if he has the correct paradigm setup, he can effectively use Pulse to get you in the correct positioning to mess you up the next beat while negating one of your powerful attacks. Pulse can be quite a powerful tool for a smart Zamasal. Let's go on to the part that everybody loves, Zamasal Advanced Strategies and Combos. Zamasal Advanced Strategies can be diluted into three main points. Point number one, Paradigm Management. Paradigm Management is quite simple. Uh, you just have to a. Make sure that you don't get stunned even if you're faster. Remember that. I have to emphasize that so many times. And B. If you desperately need your paradigm, make use of your paradigm shifts as well as your dash to effectively just get a free paradigm wherever you want because dash is essentially free turns. Number two. Remember your setups. Setups are quite the central thing about Zamasal's game plan. It's really weird. But if he essentially gets you into one of his setups, you essentially just lose the next two turns until you get your dash back or something. So, uh, what is Zamasal's most powerful setup? And it's easily, and I mean easily, his Paradigm of Haste setup. Paradigm of Haste essentially gets rid of both dash and burst, arguably two of the most powerful bases in the game. And as long as you're in melee range with him, Zamasal can dominate you with his powerful Militia style as well as his powerful Sturdy style in combination with Strike and a bunch of other melee attacks that you can no longer dodge because Zamasal's in your face and gonna destroy you. Note that this is also quite powerful because Zamasal doesn't have to commit to this setup. If he sets this up and, go, and you go like, ah yeah, he's gonna strike me now. He doesn't have to commit to it. He can easily just burst out because he's not locked into that melee range like you are. Therefore, the haste, the haste setup is just so good. And I highly recommend using it against a lot of characters who have minimum range or trouble hitting you. But avoid doing this against juggernauts because trust me, you can't fight their game. And number three, don't play their game. I know Zamasal has a lot of good stats, but he can only really get those stats one beat at a time. But aside from that, the stats he has on his cards are nowhere near the stats of people who are actually dedicated to those stats. He has some power on Ma Malicious, but it's not gonna be anywhere near Clockwork. He has some speed on Urgent, but it's nowhere gonna be close to anything Demetras can do. So with that in mind, you're about exploiting people's weaknesses wherein not a lot of characters can do that. Simply put, you're a brawler, so don't forget that. Now it's time for some Zamasal combos. Number one is Urgent Drive. Urgent Drive has a lot of hit confirm, a lot of movement, and a lot of speed. It's easy setup for the Paradigm of Haste uh, Vortex Kill You setup, so it's pretty powerful for that alone. Just make sure that you stun your opponent with this or you'll lose your paradigm. Next up is Sturdy Strike. Sturdy Strike synergizes very well with the paradigm of haste setup of Doom. Uh, you basically get free 4 damage in. It's as simple as that. And finally we have Malicious Shot. Malicious Shot is quite powerful. In fact, I think it's one of the most powerful attack pairs you can play simply because it has a lot of range and deals a lot of damage. Plus, it lets you transition from your uh, haste set up Vortex of Doom into continuously trading with your opponent until they lose like 7 life in the process. It's very powerful and it's a great transitionary tool into a more aggressive playstyle and I highly recommend it for that reason alone. And that pretty much does it for this episode of Battle Guides featuring Zamasal. Now this is the last episode of War of Indians which means that I get to move on to Fate of Indians, which is gonna be amazing because I still have to figure out everybody in Fate. But not only that, it now means that I have to start talking about Force Gauge. And I know that I've gone on record in saying that I don't necessarily think Force Gauge is the best thing ever, but we're gonna have to analyze it because it's standard. So, uh, 
maybe the next video won't be a battle guide yet. It might just be like an analysis video for Force Gauge because it's very important to understand how Force Gauge works if we're gonna talk about all of these fate characters who were balanced around that. Note that Force Gauge retroactively replaces special action and everything. So right now, you really have to re don't necessarily remember your special action anymore because we have Force Gauge now. Um... In my Force Gauge video, I'm gonna basically tell you guys how losing the special action will affect a lot of the characters we've talked about before, as well as uh, talk about how all of these new antis and stuff can influence previous characters. Remember that I won't go into specifics, I'll just be more on the general side of things. Now, uh, if you guys like the video, or like the character, or like the game, check the description out below for more level 99 game stuff. I'm sure you'll like them. If you want to talk to me or any of the other Battlecon veterans, check the description out below for our community links and join our community, our forums, and whatever. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about the lore of Battlecon or anything, the wiki's down there too. And if you guys want to send me an email, my email's in the description down below as well. Of course, if you guys have any comments or questions, ask them away in the comment section down below, and I will obviously try to answer it as soon as I can. Note that voting usually comes at the end of these videos, but since Fate's coming in um, fresh, I'll, I'll take the liberty of picking the first character and then you guys get to vote from then on. Uh, without much to say, don't forget your special action and this is less of a, you know, this is a good gameplay tip and more of a, let's not forget the original special action because it's gone and I feel really sad about that. So don't forget your special action and thank you World of Indians. Thank you and good night.